Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. It is good to be back. It's really good to be back. Um, we got a fun show today. Uh, Alongu Jr. Macabu. Um, who? Yeah, Canelo's likely next opponent. Um, we're going to get into it. We're going to break it down. Uh, we're going to tell you why this fight's a good fight. Um, but before we do, please like and subscribe. Share on all forms of social media, 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog. Quick hit to show you every day. It's him today. Keep you up to date on the latest, greatest boxing news and rumors. Uh, just real quick hits. Um, also, please subscribe to the other channel, Text Boxing Scene on YouTube. Uh, all proceeds from that channel go to Autism Research and Recovery. So please like, share, and subscribe to that channel. Uh, please help us get that up and running. Again, near and dear to our heart, all proceeds from that channel go to Autism Research and Recovery. It's completely dedicated to Text Boxing. All right, y'all, let's get into today's show. Um, just. <laughs> um, I, I'm actually into this fight, and I know Tim Bradley and others, a lot of the boxing community have have mocked this fight. Um, look, it, this is kind of a tailor made fight for Canelo. If he's gonna go up to cruiserweight, if he's gonna jump over the heavyweight and go to cruiserweight, if he's gonna be a 54, 60, 68, 75, a five division world champion. Um, if he's going to fight someone much bigger than him in a much bigger weight class, this is kind of the fight he should take. And, and I'll tell you why. This is, uh, you know, cruiserweight maximum is two is 200 pounds. You saw guys like Gassiev and, um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, <laughs> Usyk, who were like 215, 220, um, and they cut down, you know, 215, 270, and they cut down to 200. Um, that's not the case here. If you go look at McAvoy, he's fought a lot of fights, 193, 196, 194, 197. He seems to be right around, you know, he weighs around 200 pounds, so he's not cutting down. Um, you know, I don't know what Canelo's going to come in at. You know, I heard Canelo walks around around 90. Let's say he comes in, you know, I'm expecting to weigh 178, something like that. You know, so he's still giving up 20 pounds, which is a ton, but it's only 20 pounds. It's not 30, 40 pounds. Uh, and we saw it with Usyk, with Joshua, you know, if you're a much better athlete, if you're, you're much more skilled, um, you can give up some weight. Um, so it's the right guy for Canelo as a fight. Like, I, I don't think Canelo could beat Bradis. He couldn't beat Usyk when Usyk was down at Cruiserweight. I don't think he could beat Gassi when Gassi was down at Cruiserweight. Um, but this guy he can beat. Now, again, I want to give Macabu a chance. I really do. Um, we're going to get into exactly why I think that. Um, this is not an easy fight. This is not a walkover fight, although Canelo's got a really good chance to win it. Uh, but Macabu, okay, so he's southpaw. Okay, he's slow. But he's got good footwork. He's got good feet. He comes in from angles. Um, like, like, like His footwork is slow, but it's pretty good, you know. Um, he loves to fight on the inside. So this is going to be a fight that's, that's fought on the inside. You know, uh, Macabu is going to be substantially taller than um, Canelo. He's six foot. Well, that's short for a cruiserweight. So Macabu is used to fighting on the inside. Um, you know, six foot's like Caleb Plant size. You know, um, he's built a lot differently than Caleb Plant. Obviously, um, he, you know, he, he, he's stocky. He's he, you know, he's pretty well built. Um, but he's not any taller than Caleb Plant. Um, or, you know, Billy Joe's right around six foot five eleven, I think. So there's not going to be a you know. Canelo's used to fighting a guy his height, so that's not going to be an issue. He's not 6'4". Um, so that shouldn't be an issue. And the fight's going to be fought on the inside. Now, I, I'm interested in, like, a guy has 20 pounds of weight, and, and we're going to fight this thing inside. I want to see if Canelo gets pushed around. That's what he's got to do. He's got a bulldog. He's got to go in there like a wrecking ball, you know, and just push him, beat him up, lean on him, push him around, be the stronger man in the ring. Um, we're gonna find out a lot about Macabu. Um, again, he cuts off the ring well, but I, I you know, I, I, I don't think Canelo's gonna be. I think this fight's gonna be fought on the inside. You know, I, I think Canelo will move at times, but mostly this fight's gonna be fought on the inside. 
Um, like I said, he, he's taller than Canelo, but he's not a tall fighter for his weight class, so he's used to fighting on the inside. So this is where we're going to do this. Um, he seems to have really good snap on his punches. You, you look at his box track, right? And, and I know that's what most of us are doing because, well, we haven't seen him much. He's got – he's 28 and 2. He's got 25 knockouts. And you go on YouTube, you watch some of his fights, and that, that seems – it seems that he's got good snap. It doesn't seem like he's just knocking out bumps. It seems like he's got a good snap. Um, he throws everything. He doesn't jab enough. Everything's on the inside. Um, but he's not going to have to work to get on the inside with Canelo. <clears throat> um, he's got a beautiful left uppercut, right? He's southpaw, beautiful uh, backhand uppercut. Um, like I said, he's got good feet. He's got good feet. He comes in at angles. Um, for a big guy, he's... He moves well. He does, his feet doesn't get tangled up. He, he's not off balance. Um, but again, he's pretty slow. Right? His feet are slow. His hand seem his hand speed seems a little slow. You know, he's gonna be the faster guy in the ring. Um, he's a mostly left-handed puncher, right? I mean, he jabs a little bit, he hooks a little bit with the right hand, but most of his power shots, most of his big shots are all thrown with his left hand. Um, like I said, the left uppercut, the straight left, it's kind of his bread and butter. You know, that's what he's gonna do. Um he goes to the body, and it, it watch, if you watch his fights as he progresses, uh, he becomes a better and better body puncher. So this could be a fight, you know, a fun fight where the two guys dig to each other's body. Um, Again, and, and the strength is going to be his uppercut. He's going to have to learn the uppercut on the inside. He's going to have to get Canelo's body. And I've always wanted to see someone get Canelo's body, right? Just bang him in the stern, right? Just hit him hard, you know. By the time you do that 10 times in a fight, it's going to slow you down. And, and that's what I want to see him do. Uh, he goes to the body well. He fights on the inside pretty well. Now he's fighting Canelo on the inside. It's going to be interesting. You know, Canelo's obviously more skilled, but he's also giving up 20 pounds. So can can McAboo just push him around? Can he just be the bigger, stronger man? You know, that's what he's going to have to do. Now, who is Junior McAboo? Um, he he got knocked out by Bell, uh, Tony Bellew back in 2016. He ran off a bunch of wins, um, and then he beat Dmitry Kurdishov in 2019. Knocked him out in five rounds. Uh, was up, had won, you know, um, every round on at least two score of the, of the two judges' scorecards at that point. Um, then he went um, and fought uh, an eliminator um, against Alexei Papin, who was a 11 0 kind of un unbeaten prospect. Uh, Papin was obviously supposed to win that fight, and, and, and Maxwell came in. Um, Dropped him in the 12th round, rallied, um, won the fight. Um, really, really interesting fight uh, that, that Poppin was supposed to win, and he didn't. Um, and that put him in, in position to fight for the vacant WBC Cruiserweight title um, January 31st of 2020, right before the pandemic. Um, and he uh, outpointed uh, fairly wide Michael Sislak of Poland. Again, these aren't the biggest names in the world. Uh, you know, you guys probably know Dmitry Kershaw, um, Alexei Poppin was, you know, not someone we knew real well, but we had, you know, we heard the name. And then Michael Sislak, a, a, a Polish cruiserweight who he had beat for a vacant title. And then he, he just fought back uh, last December. <clears throat> um, he fought Olo Raju, uh, a 34-7 fighter who I've not heard of. I'm not even going to try to say his name. And he knocked him out in seven rounds. Um, so he can go the distance, but he's a power puncher, right? Like his knockout percentage is good. Like I said, he's got two losses. He lost to Bellew, and he lost his first fight. Um, so, again, he like, who is he is not a relevant question. It doesn't matter who he is. If you've never heard of him, that's a you thing. Like, I, I want to say it to Bradley. If you've never heard of him, that's on you. Because he's fought names. You should know him, right? Um, if you haven't, it's because you weren't paying attention to the cruiserweight division. Just because you don't pay attention to the cruiserweight division, which a lot of Americans don't, doesn't mean he's not good. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, I'm, I'm going to make a prediction on this later. I, I think McAvoy's got a chance. I know most of y'all don't, but let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, all forms of social media. Also, please subscribe to the other channel, Texas Boxing Scene, uh, completely dedicated to Texas Boxing. All proceeds go to Autism Research and Recovery. Uh, it is November 24th, 2021. Ivan Calderon is not in the Boxing Hall of Fame. That needs to change. Let's get the Iron Boy in from Texas to the world. Thank you and God bless.
Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.